Today, I'm gonna share with you three things that I've learned. Today, I'm gonna. Today, I'm gonna share with you three things I've learned from literally hundreds of outings and hikes and park visits with my German Shepherds. Are you so psyched? I know. What in the world were you doing? My oh boys, this is pretty cool. We've made it. We've been hiking for almost an hour. Are we just in a happy place? So we are on a trail. Got them views on views. We are now entering the fort. We've got a jogger coming. I told you there was a lot. Roll the intro. Welcome to the channel. My name is Will. This is Enzo. Lotus. She's just run into me, awfully demanding. One of the stipulations I made with my wife when she said she wanted to get a dog was that it had to be trained because I wanted to be able to take it everywhere with us. Fast forward four and a half years, and that's pretty much what I do. Every day, just about every day, we go somewhere, some sort of adventure, whether it's a park or hike or anything. Now, I don't claim to be an expert in anything, but I thought I would take this opportunity to share some of the things that I've learned over the last four and a half years and literally probably a thousand hiking trips. So the first thing we need to do is plan ahead. I'm trying to tell them the plan. Let me tell them, let me talk. First, send your GPS location to your wife, husband, significant other, friend, relative, somebody. Let somebody know where you're at. Just today we were on a massive hike and I had no service. Now, I did tell the wifey where I was going ahead of time, and I had planned to send her a GPS location and got there and realized that even within the last three or four miles before the trail of driving, I had no service. So definitely send that ahead of time. Also, know the trail you're going to. There are a lot of rules that I'm learning every day. Things like some trails don't allow dogs. Some trails allow mountain bikes, ATVs, horses, which is great if you're working on socialization, which we did uh, several months back. I have a video on it where we went on a popular mountain biking trail. It was mountain bike and walking traffic. And it was great for socializing them and getting them used to bikes. To this day, they're pretty much fine with bikes. However, if you're not wanting that and you want something a little bit more predictable, then you need to research that ahead of time. I use an app called All Trails. It's free to sign up. You can download it in the app store. It's not perfect, but it's the best I found so far. Now I mentioned dogs may not be allowed. Uh, you typically see this in like nature reserves. So if the park is listed as like a nature reserve, chances are the dogs might not be allowed. They might, but you need to check that ahead of time. Also look for like any water crossing, significant water crossing, especially if it's really cold like today, I knew we were near water, but I didn't realize there was little streams. Like, I mean, we're talking like little, little streams like this big. You got to keep that in mind because like it's 22 degrees. I can't have them getting wet. So think about things like that. Plus, even in the summer, I just generally don't want them getting wet. I didn't even say anything. Now, this may seem obvious, but know the weather. For instance, as I mentioned today, we went hiking. It was like 22 degrees and it was overcast, but it was calm. There was no wind or anything. We were in a lot of trees, so that probably helped too. That it can be a lot better than say 40 degrees, but it's super windy and overcast and you know wind chills and such like that. So you can't just go by what the temperature says. You gotta kinda learn that and learn what it's really gonna feel like and dress accordingly, basically. And speaking of weather, we're always trying to avoid the muddies at all costs, but some trails actually have rules. Like if they're muddy, you can't go on them. So keep that in mind. Depending on the time of year, especially in the spring and the fall, if it rained, even like a week prior, it may be wet. So there's some trails, some smaller trails in parks and stuff that we go to. There's some that I know that if it was to rain tonight, I could probably go to them tomorrow and be fine. But then there's others I know that if it rains tonight, I can't go there for like a week. That's really gonna be hard to know unless you know people comment on that. That's one of those things you kind of just gotta learn. When in doubt, don't go to a new trail if it's rained recently is probably my suggestion. And the last part of this first section is know where to park. A lot of trails will not necessarily tell you this, so you kind of got to take your best judgment. Uh, if it's a state or, or city park or national park, a lot of times they'll tell you spots. But then like some of these trails, even though like today was a massive state park, there really wasn't like any specific things that said like you could park here. However, looking at Google Maps and different things, I thought we might be able to, and I looked out, we were. 
there was actually a parking section. It was very like subtle, but it was there. Some things to keep in mind though, if you can, or maybe scout the area ahead of time or give yourself a little bit more time. So like, don't be on such a time schedule is we've gone to some of these trails where I have to park right on the side of the road or off a main road, like in the grass. I mean, these are parts, they're designated parking spaces, but they're grassy or they're muddy or sandy or whatever. The pups, they have their own car. I bought them an FJ just for taking the pups places. So I don't really have to worry about stuff like that. And being that they're well-trained, while I don't like to park next to a road, if that's what I have to do, I'm comfortable with it. I know they're gonna sit when I open the door. They're not gonna come out till I tell them. So that way I can put them on a leash. I can bring them out one at a time slowly, have them sit and do all that. My point being that if this is new to you, if you haven't done this or if you have a dog that's untrained, I would definitely avoid situations like this. And obviously if you don't have an actual four wheel drive car or SUV, I should say, I would also be very mindful of where you park. Sorry, crossovers, you don't count. All right, part two, know what you need to bring. Now for the day trips that we do where we're really just gone a few hours, today we're gone like four or five hours. You know, it's not a crazy amount. You may want to keep extra stuff in your car, but as far as like actual on the trails, and the big thing that I want to always have is water, water bowls. Now keep in mind, shepherds, they are susceptible to what's called stomach flip. That's not the technical term, but while you generally hear about it with food, it can happen with water. So if you're going to be on the trails, especially for, you know, hour, two hours, three hours, especially if it's summertime or something like that, you need to be able to offer them water. But this is the one time what I would really stress dog hair, limiting the amount of water you give them, make sure it's on the ground so that they're, you know, don't like hold it up or put it on something elevated and like let them bend down, that'll help. Limit how much you give them. So if, if need be, stop more frequently just so they can get a little bit. If you're doing like an all day type of thing or something, then I would suggest maybe setting up your times of breaks, like, you know, plan a 30 minute break to where they can drink in the beginning and then you can cut them off and give them like 30 minutes before you take off again, or, you know, keep them on a short leash for, you know, 30 plus minutes afterwards. It is such a serious thing. Like if their stomach flips, you have minutes, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes and, and they die. You know, it's not a joke. It's not something to risk. If it really came down to it, I would just not give them water. Like this is the one time where I just wouldn't do it if that's really what it came down to. Oftentimes, if we're only gonna be hiking for an hour or less, I won't even bring water. I mean, I'll bring it just in case something happens, but I won't give it to them until we get back to the car just because I don't feel that it's that much of a risk for them to go an extra 20, 15, 20 minutes without water versus the risk of stomach flip. Again, if it was if it was summer, if it was 90 degrees out and you're doing something crazy, which I don't necessarily suggest, but if you were, then yeah, bring the water and just you know keep them on a short leash, do a cool down, wait 30 minutes, whatever, um, but take it very seriously. Did you have Enzo's ball too? Is that what's going on? In addition to that, cleanup bags, obviously pretty self-explanatory. First aid kit. Now I'll, full disclosure, I don't actually have a first aid kit for them, but what I do carry is some gauze packs, some cloth tape, some like wrap, and some antibacterial wipes so that if they were to get a cut or a scrape, I could clean it a little bit and wrap it and get back to the car. That is something I wanna look more into is getting like a full on kit. But right now we're still pretty short on the hikes. I probably still should have more, but those are the minimums that I like to have in the backpack with me in case something happens. Thankfully, nothing ever has. One time at the park, Enzo cut his paw on something, but that was just our local park. Um, I don't even know what he did. It might have just been the concrete or frozen ground or something, I'm not sure, but yeah, I see your soccer ball. I mentioned already, but leashes, even though I go off leash with them a lot, uh, I still always have leashes. In fact, I have shorter ones just for it. They clip on my belt clip, they hang down. So that way they're readily available if I need them. When I'm hiking somewhere where I have a blind corner, I always bring them back to a heel. If I'm unsure, I'll put them on a leash. I'm usually trying to get to places that are farther away anyways. Now, those aren't necessarily the same leashes I use if I'm out working on socialization or something. Those are just so they can clip on and not touch the ground and stuff. Um, they're real short leashes. And lastly, a backpack, duh. I mean, you gotta carry all this stuff in something. Part three of things that you need to know, and this has to do with after the hike. Fleas and ticks are a concern, obviously. Now, the good thing is like today, it's 22 degrees. I really don't have to worry about fleas and ticks. If the temperature creeps up above freezing, ticks sometimes can come out, you know, this far into the winter, it's probably unlikely, but it could happen. Fleas, they're pretty much dormant, anything below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so don't have to worry about them as much. 
That being said, I still give them a top to bottom wipe down. The ears, gotta be gentle. Around the necks, especially in the spine, the whole back, the whole underbelly, their armpits, their leg pits, in between their paws, all those spots where ticks and fleas could hide. We use a special soap. It's linked below in the Amazon store. It has neem in it, which is a natural killing agent of insects. And I just give them a good thorough wipe down with that every time, even today. It was 22 degrees, still top coat, everything, good wipe down. It's just not worth the risk. We've been fortunate in four and a half years, six and a half, seven if you count lotus on top of that, I've had one tick and one flea, both lotus. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. I feel like I've been talking fast, hopefully not. The wifey texted me, she's on her way home, so I was trying to get this done in time before she got here, because when she gets here, they're gonna go all crazy. But I hope this all made sense. I'll chapter them down below, so if you wanna revisit any of this stuff, if you have any questions, comment below. I'll be happy to answer anything you have. We have tons of vlogs and videos where we go hiking, so if you just kinda of wanna see it, I don't not necessarily explain stuff as we're doing it, but if you wanna see more of this stuff in action, the hike that I was talking about today, that video will be up. If it's not up before this, it'll be up next, probably. So expect that in, within the week at this point. Otherwise, appreciate you guys as always. Subscribe for more German Shepherd content, and we will see you on the next video. Oh, you hear mom? Yeah, there she is. Yeah. Later, guys.